This video was sponsored by The Great Courses Plus, an online video service which provides you with access to a lot of interesting lectures, so stay tuned till after to find out more. As winter has officially arrived, we see snow gently fall to the ground, filling us with holiday cheer before slowly crushing us in a freezing tundra. This long period of cold reminds us all, or at least me, of another time of never-ending cold, the Ice Age. Every 100,000 years or so, the global temperature drops significantly, and ice spreads out across the northern hemisphere, covering vast areas of North America, Europe, and Siberia under glaciers. The rest of the world experiences a significantly cooler and drier climate. These periods of planet-wide coldness are commonly referred to as ice ages. They last for thousands of years, and then the glaciers slowly recede, the earth warms back up, and the cycle begins anew. The last ice age ended around 12,000 years ago, so all of human history has existed in this nice interglacial period. Thanks, global warming. So as we enter a tiny, endless winter of our own, let's imagine. What if, in an alternate timeline, the last ice age didn't go away? What if it never ended? The last ice age started 35,000 years ago, and ended 12,000 years ago. For this scenario, let's say that the glaciers never really retreated once the Ice Age reached its max extent 20,000 years ago. People can't survive on ice, of course, and so as the glaciers slowly went south, the people migrated south too. Luckily for these ancient humans, there's a lot more land to colonize. There's only enough water to go around, so the glaciers drained a lot of the ocean, lowering sea levels almost 120 feet, dramatically altering the map, and creating new lands that in our timeline have been lost for thousands of years. Scientists theorize that people settled and lived their entire lives on these now lost regions which were once all over the world for a hundred thousand years. In this alternate timeline, had these places not been flooded by the ocean and the population not dispersed, these regions are now centers of culture, villages, and hunting grounds. Europe is divided into three parts, glacier, tundra, and plains. The glaciers have lowered sea levels to change the shape of Europe. There's no British Isles or Scandinavia. Northern Europe is one peninsula, named Doggerland. The Rhine and Toms were connected into one super river, which would drain into the Atlantic. The sea level dropped so much that the Italian and Balkan peninsula connected, creating a vast plain that resembled the fields of Russia. Today this land is covered by the Adriatic Sea, but had the ice not melted, this region is one of the few bastions of suitable land on the frigid European continent. Crossing the vast desert which engulfed most of Asia, we get to present-day Southeast Asia. Today this area and in Indonesia contain thousands of islands stretching down to the continent of Australia. Yet 20,000 years ago, this region was simply two lands, Sunda and Sahul. Sunda's lowest point, an area now covered in ocean, was a tropical grassland comparable to India. This grassland almost connected, going through this unified landmass until it reached the grasslands of northern Sahul, a continent which connected Papua New Guinea and Australia. If the Ice Age continued at its maximum, glaciers extend throughout all of present-day Canada. In our timeline, the ancestors of Native Americans, simply called the Clovis people, entered through paths in the melting glaciers about 16,000 years ago. Before then, they had been blocked from entering the New World by a massive wall of ice. If this massive wall of ice doesn't melt, then Native Americans just don't exist. The Americas remain the last regions on Earth without any human settlement. Without humans in the Americas, these magnificent beasts and other megafauna would never have disappeared. People wiped out the megafauna, not climate. When Native Americans came to the New World 13,000 years ago, in an odd bit of irony, their hunting culture with their stone tools wiped out the natural megafauna which had existed for millions of years in the Americas. Camels and horses, animals that dominated the old world, came from North America originally. The only reason why the llama was the largest animal in the Americas at the time of Columbus was because everything else died thousands of years ago. Not just camels and horses, but mastodons, short-faced bears, giant sloths, woolly rhinos, all hunted to extinction. In this alternate timeline, humans never migrate into the Americas, so today the natural ecosystems are populated by these animals. Imagine camels on the plains of Kansas, ground sloths in Connecticut, elephants in California. Just like this literal ice wall prevented humans from expanding, 
The Ice Age was a wall on the human development. To have civilization, you need permanent settlement. To have this, you need agriculture. And it's no coincidence, once the glaciers receded 12,000 years ago, that agriculture finally began. This was because the climate and weather was most likely so unstable that it was probably easier to just hunt than to have crops that would randomly die due to the Ice Age. The Ice Age was the last, ultimate prevention of humanity's eventual domination over the world. Had the Ice Age continued, civilization would not have. The entire rise of the human story is in this brief moment between the glaciers. Even though winter may have begun, you may have to scrape ice off your car, it could be a whole lot different. Just because of a little difference in the Earth's rotation, we have invented cars, we've invented indoor heating, and the human population now numbers 7 billion all over the globe. So what's the entire point of this video? Winter, snow, and ice are terrible. They are so terrible, civilization wouldn't exist if there was more of it. We have spent thousands of years trying to keep ourselves from experiencing winter. I am not a winter person. Happy first day of winter, Merry Christmas, Happy Life Day, this is Cody of Altering History Hub. Oh wait, so this video was sponsored by The Great Courses Plus, a subscription on-demand video learning service where you have access to many video lectures taught and hosted by professors from around the globe. You can access these lectures with any streaming device. Great Courses allows you complete access to over 7,000 video lectures that cover anything. In fact, I used them to research this video, partially a lecture about the Ice Age by Professor Stuart Sutherland in his course, A New History of Life. He discussed the time scale and history of mammals as well. Apart from this, there's science, math, history, literature, or even learning assorted things like cooking. These courses are taught by top professors from all around the globe, and in settings hosted by National Geographic, The Smithsonian, and many others. Since semester just started, you don't have to worry about grades or schedules, just watch whatever. If you want to expand your knowledge from numerous professors, then start now. Click on this link to get one month of unlimited access to courses and videos absolutely free. Just visit thegreatcoursesplus.com slash althistoryhub. The link is provided in the description below. So go ahead, this is Cody of Altering History Hub.